Strumming patterns. That's a question you'll see asked all over the internet. What's the strumming pattern? And it's a perfectly good question. But in this lesson, we're going to talk about why strumming patterns are a good thing, why they are a bad thing, how to know the difference, and how to not even worry about the strumming pattern anymore. Why strumming patterns are good? Well, think of it this way. A strumming pattern is very much like a musical scale. So for example, the scale of C major, you don't need to know how to play this, but you will have heard the sound. Why do we even have the scale of C major? What's it for? That's not music. You couldn't go on stage and just play through your scales and expect people to be appreciative of it. Um, it's a tool, it's an exercise. What it does is it trains our fingers and our brain and our ears and everything about how we think about music is trained to hear those sounds, know where they are, understand how they fit together. And that means when we come to play a piece of music that uses that scale, we already know where we're going. It's a little bit like driving a car. There are lots of things going on when you drive a car, but you can't think about them all. If you were thinking about every time you turn on an indicator and change gear and press the brake and press the clutch and press the accelerator and switch the channel on the radio, all of the things that we do on a journey, if you were to think about every single one of those consciously, you'd probably end up in a ditch. And that's because when we first start learning, we're helped along, we're taken on short drives, we don't do anything too challenging, and we sit and we learn where all those things are. A scale is learning where all the things you need are. It's not music. A strumming pattern is much like a scale. It's training this hand to play a rhythm. The strumming pattern isn't the rhythm. The strumming pattern is what we do with our hand in order to play the rhythms we want to play. One of them is an exercise, the other is music. Why strumming patterns are bad. Now, there's nothing wrong with this per se, but if you have your strumming pattern written at the top of a song in a ukulele club songbook, that might encourage people to try and read that strumming pattern as they're playing. Now, if you're thinking about the chords and you're reading them and you're trying to play them and you're reading the words and you're singing the words and you're trying to keep up with everybody else and pay attention to the leader of your group who's probably waving his hands trying to tell you to do a certain thing, you can't also be trying to understand a strum pattern at the same time. It's too much stuff going on. If we can go back to the car, that's like getting in a car to go on a journey before you've figured out whether it's a manual or an automatic or which side the wipers are on and which side the indicators are on and you're going to find that it's very stressful and you're probably going to have issues along your journey. You're going to stall it. You're going to have people blasting the horn at you. It's not going to be a pleasant experience. It's good to have a little note there to remind you of the rhythm of a song. No problem with that at all. But that's a reminder for something you should already be able to do. Just like when a musician looks at a piece of music and it says, this is in the key of C. The musicians don't then go, C, I wonder how that works. Hmm, what's the scale of C? Now they already know that. This is just a reminder. So they're great for a reminder, but they're a very bad thing if they are at all conscious and you are at all trying to interpret them on the fly. It's too much. And this is where people fail, because they can't do all of those things at the same time. And no wonder. So how do we use strumming patterns to make music and make it in a much more musical, instinctive, human way, rather than just reading downs and ups and trying to get our hand to do it like a robot? This is how we do it. First thing we have to do is we have to rationalise what this hand is doing. Now I've taught lots and lots of ukulele groups and quite often I will start teaching a basic pattern to people in the group, a basic rhythm. And as I look around the room, I'll be looking at people's right hands, if they're right-handed, and seeing if they're doing what mine is doing. And some will be doing what mine is doing, but some will be doing this. And some might even be going, 
All of those are the same rhythm. They're not the same strumming pattern. Each one of those will take a different amount of your conscious power to keep going. The minute we change that rhythm to something more complicated, all the people that weren't doing it the way I was doing it would completely fall to pieces. I'm using a particular way of strumming because, watch this, if I strum on the beat, so one, two, three, four, all down strokes, if I want to introduce another strum in between those beats, say on the and in between, one and two and three and four and, did you see that my hand didn't change its up and down motion? And I've gone back to the first one. Here's the one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Swinging my hand up and down like that is something I can do without concentrating, or counting, or thinking up, down, up, down, up, down. So that's the first thing to do, is to get this up and down. If we go back to thinking about scales again, I could play a C major scale like this. Or I could play it like this. With more or less random fingers. And I could do it with different fingers every time. Will it help me? No. It was the same scale. Yes, it was all the right notes. But because I wasn't using a rational system of fingering, it was one, difficult, two, easy to make mistakes, and three, it was not getting into my muscle memory so I wouldn't be able to do it again to find those notes in a real life situation. It's the same with this hand. So what I want you to do now is just to play along with me, but you can play the down strokes alone or the downs and the ups or anything you want as long as your hand does what mine does. One, two, three, four. You can play just the down strokes. You can put the up strokes in. You can put an occasional up stroke in any way you want. We're already making rhythms. And we're not thinking about down, 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 up. We're not having to think about that. We can't go wrong. Even if I want to play down, 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 and I accidentally hit an up, it doesn't throw my rhythm out. I can recover from it almost immediately without even worrying about it, like this. Oh, never mind. Even if I miss a downstroke, I keep my hand going and I can recover it again and I won't have lost the beat. The rhythm has carried on with a variation. And we're used to hearing variations in rhythm. And that's something we're going to come to in a moment that is very rare for a some type of strum pattern all the way through that doesn't have some sort of variation. So just practice doing this down, up, down motion. Sometimes hitting on the way up, sometimes not hitting on the way up, but all the time doing this. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. And keep that as a solid swinging metronome, if you like. It's also great for helping you stay in time. So when we've rationalized what this hand is doing and it's used to doing it, without any kind of real conscious effort, we can stop thinking about strumming patterns and we can start thinking about the sound we are making, the rhythm we are playing. So instead of thinking down, 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 up, down, and going down, 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 up, oh no, I should have gone up, down, oh no, it's too much effort. We can go, right, let's get my hand going up and down and I'm going to go down, down, down. Well, I know those downs all fall on the beat, so that's fine. That up, that's going to be when my hand is naturally going up in between beats. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. Or one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. You see, we only need to know the downs and the ups when we haven't already got this system in place. Once we have the system in place, the downs, ups and downs aren't really important anymore. Now I should add at this point, because I know I will get messages, I'm not writing any of this down. 
It is not appearing on the screens and there will not be a PDF download for it because that is completely going to spoil the whole idea of the lesson, which is we have to start from a point of view of knowing where our hand is going to be going up and down and then starting to listen to the rhythm we want. If we write it down, the temptation is to always read it. It's a little bit like if you've got the chord diagrams, you'll always look at them. If we take the chord diagrams away, then you have to learn how to play the chords. It's very easy to get reliant on some of these things written down. And I completely understand it. When you're a beginner, particularly, wanting stuff written down. I did it. I made notes on everything. I kept folders full of stuff when I first started playing music <coughs> 30 years ago. Um, because it was a safety net. If I had it written down, I couldn't forget it. If I had it written down, then I'd always be able to go back and almost relearn it. But it did stop me from listening and from thinking more musically about what I was doing. It made me read things. So now we're starting to think about rhythm and not downs and ups. It doesn't mean the downs and ups aren't important. It doesn't mean we can't say that a pattern has down, down, up, up, down, up. But has it ever occurred to you that if a strum pattern says down, down, up, up, down, up, I could play that like this. Down, down, up, up, down, up. But I could go down, down, up, up, down, up. It's meaningless unless I already have this in place. If this is in place, then basically down, down, up, up, down, up can only sound like this. Down, down, up up, down, up. It only works if we already have that hand in place. If not, it could be any combination of notes played with the hand going in that direction and sometimes you might get two fast downs and then a big gap and then an up. So this is the crucial, this is the, the, the engine of our playing. Once you've got that, everything else will start to fall into place. So let's start thinking about musical rhythms. Now all the rhythms we're going to do now, I'm going to ask you to play along with me, are not going to be written down, they're not going to appear on the screen. Get that out of your head now, start listening and thinking about where your hand is going, but not per beat, just concentrate on it going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, all the time. And if you can, we're not going to do anything other than a C chord with our left hand, so you don't need to think about that hand. Watch my hand and make sure, really make sure, that you're not going up when I'm going down. We're going to just start off with our four downward strokes on the beat that we had before. One, two, three, four. Right. Now, even now, make sure that your hand is doing what mine's doing. Down, 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 on the beat. Okay. Now this rhythm's just going to evolve but our right hand is never going to stop going down, 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 with the ups in between that we can't hear at the moment, but we will hear them in a second. Right, now put all of the ups in. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Remember to keep your hand really relaxed. Let your fingers go floppy, let your wrist go loose. Now go back to just the down strokes. Okay, now we're going to put one upstroke in and it's going to be in between three and four, beats three and four, like this. One, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. Okay, now let's put it in between beats two and three. One, two and three, four. One, two and three, four. Now let's put it in between beats one and two. Here we go. And one and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. Now let's put it everywhere except in between two and three. So here we go. 
one and two, three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two, three and four and. Keep checking your hand. One and two, three and four and. That one just misses out one upstroke. This one in between two and three. Two, three and four and one and two. Let's go back to the four on the beat. One, two, right. This time we're going to try and miss out some of the downstrokes. So we're going to slow down a little bit and we're going to try and play one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Going to miss out the fourth beat. Notice I'm still going down with my hand. My hand is still rocking up and down even though there's nothing to do. I could stop and then come back in again. But if I did that, I've got to think about stopping and starting in the same place. If I keep my hand rocking, I won't lose the beat. Right, now let's put some ands in as well. One and two, three. One and two, three. One and two, three. Okay, we're going to stop. Phew, there was a lot in there. So let's just recap what we were doing. Basically, this hand kept going up and down all the time. And all we did was decide whether we wanted to hear something happening on that particular movement or not, on a beat or on an and in between the main beats. The ands were always upstrokes, the beats were always downstrokes. Now that isn't going to cover every rhythm you're ever going to want to play, but it covers an awful lot. And by the time you're playing more complicated rhythms, this will be so ingrained that the harder stuff, where you might have to move your hand in a different way, will become much, much easier. So many rhythms can be done like that. The calypso strum, the island strum that so many people do. Let's have a look at it. If you know how to play that, play along with me. But look at my hand. Just going down and up. All I'm doing is missing out some of those strums from this. I miss out a few. So many rhythms can be built by just adding in the ands or taking out some ands if you were playing them all taking out some of the downstrokes, mixing them all up, you can create thousands of rhythms. This brings me on to another issue with what's the strum pattern. And that is that most songs don't stick to a fixed strum pattern and they sound better for it. So for example, the island strum that I was just doing, if that's the basic feel of the rhythm of the song, then I want to be playing something that has the same kind of feel, but it doesn't have to be note for note the same. I'm chucking in variations left, right and centre. You probably wouldn't want to do that many in that shorter period of time, but I was still keeping the underlying feel because I was thinking about rhythm and musical feeling and not about a strict, oh no, I have to go down, down, up, up, down, up. Simple ones of those are, if all you're playing is this, occasionally throw an upstroke in, any way you like. It's a variation. You don't have to play it exactly the way it's written. 
And you'll find that frequently, especially when you're listening to pop, folk, country, jazz, blues, those kind of music, that the people playing the instrument we're playing or the nearest equivalent. So don't just listen to what ukulele players are doing. If you're listening to a record, you need to be listening to other instruments that would be doing the same job. So listen to the guitar player, listen to the um, tenor banjo player, listen to the mandolin player, listen to instruments that are playing a chordal rhythmic backing and listen to how they do it and the rhythms that they're producing. And frequently, the songs we're playing on the ukulele weren't originally played on the ukulele. So don't limit yourself to finding a cover version of that song on the ukulele. Find other versions of it and just try and absorb what the rhythm to that song is. Now, this all sounds quite difficult because I'm telling you to listen to something and be able to play it. But the interesting thing is, people have asked me for strumming patterns for songs. And then they've got back to me and said, I don't sound like you when I play that. That doesn't sound right. Now, providing I haven't lied to them or got it wrong myself, that tells me a couple of things. It tells me that the strum pattern, as it's written down as downs and downs and ups, isn't a particularly reliable way of getting a rhythm across to somebody because I don't know if the person who's trying to do it has got this nice uniform up and down hand or if they're just going down, down, up, up, down. Oh, it doesn't sound right. Also, I don't know if they're getting it right, but they're not quite getting the inflection right or the emphasis right. And that's why to them it doesn't sound right. But it tells me another very important thing. It tells me that their ear is developed enough to notice that what they are doing doesn't sound like what I'm doing. Now, that doesn't mean that immediately they'll be able to correct themselves to what I am doing. But it does tell me that they're on the way to being able to do that. Because if you can do something and notice it sounds wrong, you're more than halfway to being able to fix it. That's the hardest bit. It's like when you're playing chords in a ukulele group and to begin with, you might not realize you're playing a chord wrong. Then one day you start to notice that, well, what I'm doing isn't sounding quite like everyone else. And that's a really important turning point. It might seem a negative thing. You might think, oh, I'm rubbish, but it's not. It's really important because you've suddenly developed the awareness that what you're doing isn't what you wanted to do. And that's the most important bit on setting your way straight to get it what you want it to be. So how can you practice strum patterns? Now, this is something I don't normally recommend in any other way of practicing, but this one is quite useful. Practice in front of the TV. Now, not to start with, but when you can sit and maybe just mute, mute your strings, just put your fingers across the strings so they just make this noise. It's a really good way to practice rhythms because it takes everything else out of the equation. You just hear a rhythm. I'm practicing this rhythm. Notice I'm talking to you while I'm doing it. It's not particularly difficult for me to do that because I've trained my hand to go up and down and I know what I want that rhythm to sound like and I've done it a lot. But the fact I can talk to you while I'm doing it means I can sing while I'm doing it. It means I can change chords while I'm doing it. It means that very little of my brain power is focused on making this happen. If you can distract yourself by, say, watching the television, it can be a really useful tool. So find something you want to watch, um, mute the strings and do it nice and quietly so you're not disturbing your own experience or anyone around you who's trying to watch the telly. Get that going and eventually something will happen. Either this will fall to pieces because you'll get so interested in the TV program. But more often than not, you'll get engrossed in the program and this will carry on. Maybe not the first or second or third time you do it, but eventually you'll find you get to a commercial break and you've been really engrossed with this particular episode of Poirot or whatever, and suddenly the, the adverts come on, the bit where you'd normally jump up to put the kettle on, and you go, oh my goodness, that rhythm is still going. In fact, it may go wrong the minute you start being conscious of it again because it's been pushed into your unconscious memory. But it can be a really useful tool. Distraction 
because what we don't want to be doing when we're playing is thinking about this hand. We just can't. Here's a fun thing to do. Get a piece of paper and divide it into eight columns. You can either just fold your paper or you can just get a ruler and divide it into eight columns. Or if, if you're feeling particularly whizzy, you can always print out a table in, in Word or Excel. You want eight columns and across the top of those you write in the first column one and in the next one and, in the next one two and in the next one and and then three and then and and then four and then and. So you've got a number and an and, a number and an and, one, two, three, four with ands in between. What you then do is you put random ticks under those and then you try and play it. So if you've ticked a few of them and, and you might end up going, right, I've ticked one, I've ticked the and after two and then I've ticked the three and the four. So now I've got to try and play one and three, four, one and three, four, one. And as long as your hand keeps swinging and you start off on your first one, your one, with a downstroke, you can't go wrong. The only thing that can go wrong is your system breaks down. But if your system is right, then that can only sound like one and three, four, one and three, four. Put some random ticks in, or if you like, find a strum pattern that you like to play and see if you can put the ticks in the right boxes to make that chart represent the strum pattern that you're playing. It should start to help you think about strum patterns as beats and those strums that fall in between the beats on the and. Thinking more about musical rhythm and musical language rather than downs and ups, which in themselves don't really mean anything musically. I really hope this has helped. This instrument is very, very rhythmic. I mean, a very wise old friend of mine once said to me when I was a, a, an early player of the ukulele, he said, the thing is you've got to remember, Phil, the ukulele is a percussion instrument. And I thought he was talking nonsense. But the point he was trying to get across was that this instrument at its best is a rhythmic instrument. And the strumming, this hand is the magic hand, this hand is the one that brings the song to life. And this instrument needs to be treated as an instrument of rhythm as much as an instrument of playing melody or chords. And so often this hand is neglected. Do subscribe for lots more lessons and go and check out learntheukulele.co.uk which links to all those lessons and has lots of resources to go with all of my free online lessons as well. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.